Um, people ask me, well, aren't you worried about the fact that you can buy drugs with this money? Um, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know of any form of money that you can't buy drugs with. Uh, more specifically, drugs are the second most traded commodity after food in the world, and have been for the last 150,000 years. Um, and if you couldn't buy drugs with your money, I would argue it's not actually money. Um, <laughs> so one of the criteria of money is that you can pr purchase products and services. And if you couldn't purchase the second most traded commodity in the world with them, then it's not really money. The appeal for Silk Road. We need to understand what the appeal for Silk Road is. And the way I put it, you know, in a nutshell, is this: You can't get stabbed over TCP/IP. That's why people buy drugs online because you can deal with the addiction without the violence. And, and violence is the main problem with drugs, and that's a problem of prohibition, not of the drugs themselves. You want to deal with Silk Road, deal with health care, deal with addiction treatment and the root causes of addiction. Don't try to control the money used to buy something that people obviously need to buy, want to buy, and will continue buying for the rest of history, just like they have been doing for the last 150,000 years. And so you're not going to stop that. Bitcoin is going to be used to buy every product and service that is currently available on the market everywhere in the world, just like every other form of money. And it's going to reflect the values of society. When you have a technology that's brand new and it's flexible enough to overcome barriers, it's going to be used in some of the corners that are the shadiest in society. But as it becomes mainstream, it starts reflecting mainstream societal values. Now in year five, the primary use of Bitcoin is for charitable donations and tipping. That's what we see from the statistics. And what that says is that the audience has expanded and now is no longer restricted to the shadiest parts. But remember what they said about the internet in 1995, that it was a den of thieves, pornographers, and terrorists, that you would never be able to find anything on it, and that it was full of fraud. And all of those things were true. <laughs> and it still was the most valuable technology we could build, because the rest of us will use it for good. I've never bought drugs on the internet. I use Bitcoin. <laughs> I, I don't use Bitcoin. I mean, I don't, I don't buy drugs. <laughs> this drug, however. <laughs> Now this is really addictive stuff. Uh, I cannot start my day without at least 20 milligrams of caffeine in my bloodstream. Um, and I'm highly addicted to this stuff. But I can get that at the corner store. Uh, unfortunately, they don't take Bitcoin. First of all, recognize the fact that technological innovation is, is always accompanied by negativity, especially by those who don't understand it or who fear change. You know, um, when electricity was introduced, people didn't go, oh, this is miraculous, it's awesome. They said, oh, this is going to burn your house down and it's ridiculous. Why not just use uh, whale oil? It works fine. Um, when the automobile was introduced, people said, well, we don't need a noisy uh, horse that breaks down all the time. Um, horses are fine. Why would anyone work with these infernal machines that kill pedestrians? That was what the media of the time said. And so just accept the fact that sensationalism leads, and sensationalism is what you're going to get. As far as the specifics, um, you know, understand what actually happens. What happened with empty Gox was you had centralized control over keys. You gave control of the keys to a single organization or individual. And we know that when you give power of money to a single individual, they run away with the money. The entire financial services regulatory infrastructure is, exists only for the reason that when you give people power of money, they run away with the money. And the only thing stopping them <laughs> is someone watching. Um, and the answer to that is don't give them power of money. It's not build more regulators and more oversight. It's use a system like Bitcoin where you don't have to do that. Um, empty Gox was a failure of centralization. You created a centralized banking infrastructure where none was necessary or needed, and then you didn't put the traditional regulation on top of it. It just existed in a gray zone. No blockchain security, no Bitcoin security, and no banking oversight right in the middle there. And yeah, it was kind of predictable. I started saying a year before that that was a bad idea and it was going to blow up in our face. Technology has always been political from the very first technology. 
Um, and you know, I come from a from the Greek tradition, and we actually talk about this. Part of our culture is is building mythology and stories to describe technology. And one of the one of the myths that I like the most is the myth of Prometheus. And Prometheus stole fire from the gods because until then only the gods had fire, right? And he stole fire from the gods and gave it to man. And then man had fire, and once man had fire, it couldn't be ever taken away again. And for that, Prometheus was punished by the gods. Right? Satoshi is Prometheus. <laughs> he took money from the banks and he gave it to man. And now there's no taking that back. Once you have knowledge, knowledge is eternal. Right? We can keep that knowledge forever. We can recreate Bitcoin forever. You can't shut that thing down. Yeah, so the fact that uh, you know, the, the ancient Greeks 3,000 years ago already knew that technology was political. And they even described a political fight between gods and man over fire, the very first technology.